All right, welcome to Night Hacking at the Javaland Conference. And I'm here with um, Stefan Schlott, and we're going to do some website hacking. Yes, we'll, at least we'll try. <laughs> we, will, we will give it our best shot. Um, so what sort of stuff are you chatting about at the Javaland Conference here? Uh, the talk's called um, Hack That Website. Perhaps I should have called it Hack Your Website because I'd <laughs> like to. Yes, first, you should only do this on site. So you're not, you're not encouraging people to go out and you know, hack the government uh, websites or banks and other financial <laughs> institutions? You, you definitely shouldn't do that unless you want to get in trouble. Yeah, um, speak, speaking of hacking, um, my, my website, probably, probably the name is like encouraging people, <laughs> <laughs> calling it night hacking. But um, I had some Russian hackers who, who hacked into one of, the, um, oh. one of the user accounts with a not very well set password <laughs> and started using my um, VPS instance to um, do denial of service attacks and also oh. try to do password, okay. brute force password hacks on other people's websites. So I got shut down for a few hours from that. Not very nice. No, not very nice. But... I think that's what they do. They basically they hack one website, use it to hack other websites, and they build up a yes a network of bots they can use to launch DDoS attacks. That's one of the the classic usages of um, compromised sites is uh, well e either using as a platform for for hacking other sites, so your um, IP your direct IP won't be compromised. Yep. yep. If something happens, uh, law enforcement will hit uh, on your site, not somewhere else. And then, of course, uh, denial of service is um, obviously some kind of business model, um, and uh, its uh, sites are used for well for sending spam. It's still, still a bulk. Um, oh, yeah, okay. For, so they're using it for bulk bulk spam sending yeah. as well. So that all, as, again, so you don't get shut down or they can't um, stop yes. the spam sources. Or they use it for um, as as intermediate for. Um, um, the, the, uh, releasing uh, the, for co for copied and uh, uh, copied software and uh, pirated movies. Oh, okay. we, we, we had over that, we probably had that it's more prevalent in Asia and Russia and those countries where they do a lot of that. Um, uh, the last case I I, I actually witnessed is, is a couple of years ago, but uh, they they took over some some old PHP gallery and used it for uh, installed some some IRC clients and then used the server for distributing. Unfortunately, a, a Spanish movie, so <laughs> we couldn't even benefit <laughs> from some early releases. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're going to teach us a little bit about how you can hack your own website. And let me, let me swap to your computer here. I think we have a, we have a pretty vulnerable website here, the damn vulnerable the web damn app. The damn vulnerable website. Um, actually, that's, a, that's a highly technical word right there. D-A-M-N is the technical term for a website. Which is yep, yep. Yeah. Um, it's um, there are for um, educational purposes there are a couple of, um, of 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 website installations available. For example, the the, the damn vulnerable web application. There's also the web code and, and a couple of others. So you can uh, do your own practices. You can test that stuff for yourself. Nice. And um, I can well, let's let, let's have a look what I've got here from the moment. Um, the, 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 um, the advantage of uh, those um, pre-installed vulnerable web applications is uh, that it's, it's easy to get started. Um, you, you know there's, there's, um, there's bait. <laughs> you know uh, you, you, um, a, success, a possible success is close. And if you get stuck, there is a lot of documentation out there in the web. You can, some of the, the web code, for example, has an, ex, an, an extra tip or hinting function, so you can get <laughs> tips how to continue with your, with your efforts. Okay, so they help you hack. Yes, exactly. Learning to hack. This is like hacking 101. <laughs> exactly, that's, that's the point. So, um, and the, the dumb vulnerable website, um, it's written in PHP. The others are in Java. Um, the, what, what's nice about this one is you, you can set the, the, the security level of the, the application. So you can, it, it will toggle some, some tests, so you can feel how the, the difficulty raises or on, on the level high, it, it, sh it should be impossible to, to hack that uh, vulnerable application. Nice. Um, so I'm setting it to low and let's have a look at, um, well, let's do some, 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 some cross-site scripting. So, um, um, for example, it, sh it, should, it should do something like this. 
originally. Okay. But um, the program is not very well written, so it will it will echo uh, <laughs> my 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 input di directly again on the website. Wow. And if it if it contains some. Um, uh, some, some, some so, text. so even markup and other stuff yes, will it, just it, it, directly it won't, it won't, the, the get problem, right into the web. Exactly, it wow. won't filter any markup. So this is the problem here. Um, it's the uh, well, very very basic um, uh, variant uh, for, um, um, for 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 uh, for cross-site scripting. And what I'm going to show you right now is that well, um, I think it's it's a common misunderstanding that that cross-site scripting is an annoying bug, but nothing else. Okay, if you dig a, dig a bit deeper, you might figure out okay, someone can possibly steal your login cookie and 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 hijack your account that way. But there's there's else that can happen, and there's a wonderful program called Beef, and I'm trying to I'm trying to get it running now right now. One moment. Um, it's a server application um, which um, is a well a full fu a full fledged um, application for doing uh, doing all kinds of stuff. Uh, this was wrong. Oh, yes, I know what's wrong. I should keep the script tags, otherwise this uh, won't work. So hopefully I did it right. Okay, let's see. No output here, uh, but the JavaScript uh, got executed. Well, what I pasted it uh. does. It, it loads a, a, a snippet, a more a larger snippet of JavaScript from the Beef Control server. Uh, and yes, exactly. Now you so, can see. So what you did is you just put code into the um, essentially into what you're submitting. Exactly. Such I, that you could hook up Beef to now control that website. I can now control not that website, but that browser. Now I yeah. can do some fun stuff with that browser. Um, Beef is a very comfortable and uh, interface. As you can see <laughs> here, you, you get here your, your list of hooked browsers, who is, um, um, well, online. It's, um, it's even more effective if you, well, imagine you, you don't put the, the JavaScript um, just as I did in the, as in the URL. Well, I can attack someone by, um, Sending him an email with a prepared, uh, well prepared, pre well link prepared that once link. he clicks so on it, it's yes, going exactly. to directly hijack um, his browser. It's, it's even worse if the, um, the the data gets stored, for example, in the database. Uh, think of a guest book or something like that. Yeah. Um, so every visitor will get hooked in beef here. And Sounds like a fun little tool. Yes, indeed, and and, and a bit <laughs> creepy as well. The first thing you get is um, a very huge list of uh, information on the on the browser. You get an overview of which plugins are activated. Cool. Um, and it's got um, a, a huge amount of, of, of commands, of modules. You ca it can extend it, of, of, of course, uh, add your own modules. You can do automatic scripting, what happens when our browser goes online, and so on. Um, I'll show you just one fun thing. Um, let's, um, let's try to... Um, um, to tell the user that his browser is outdated and he should possibly uh, load on, uh, well, an update, of course, an update that comes from an URL. I am delivering him. So I uh, click on execute. Um, it will take a second to, to appear, to happen, because it's uh, a polling mechanism. Uh, it polls the, uh, the, the control server every couple oh, of seconds. Wow. And here we see the, our old friend <laughs> Cliffy. <laughs> Your browser appears to be out of there. Would you like to upgrade it? And yes, of course, um, if Clippy, if Clippy asks, says so. If Clippy <laughs> says something, I'm always going to do it. But, uh, well, uh, even if I don't click not now... Um, it uh, still the, does it. The, 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 the hassle is, has been done, yes. I can... Yeah. Ah, it, it, it comes again, and it's, it's very persistent about this. Yeah. Until well, I finally click... Uh, yes, and then it would... Well, we have no, no real internet connection here, so it, we don't see it, but it would try to start. It's at, uh, it would try to start a download right now and uh, convince the user to install it. So <laughs> you can, you, uh, this way you can push even more malware. Even get farther. So you, you can go from their browser and actually directly attack their computer. 
Yes. By having something at the, you know, maybe a rootkit or something horrible installed. For example, you can. It's, it's got a tight integration in Metasploit, which is a, an, an awful, to, uh, a really exciting tool set for, um, for penetration testing or infiltrating computers. Um, yeah. I think that sounds familiar from the, what the Russian team was using on my <laughs> server. Oh, oh not good. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, the, point, the point I want to make is uh, that uh, the uh, think of a company which has uh, uh, established its web security by having uh, some, some firewall and some, some filtering proxy which um, keeps the hassle of the internet out of the company. Yeah. and says, okay, we have some, well, some intranet, we have some file shares, we have in computers which are only reachable internal, but if I hijack um, the, a, a browser, it might be the, 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 the jump point um, into the intranet. It yeah, might, no, well, it, actually, it, it that's... Acts, it acts as a proxy between the... the um, yeah, the, so the when, they were, when they were researching how... Um, which, which company was it? Oh, one, of the, uh, one of the companies which does all the keys... For uh, Gamalto. Yeah, Gamalto. Mm -hmm. When they got attacked, um, they'd done it by getting into the intranet from some employees. Okay. So, well, I mean, I think eventually they, they um, actually talked about the whole, you know, how, the, how they'd done the social engineering to get okay. into Gamalto's records and to get some of the keys. But, like, they were intercepting emails and doing all sorts of crazy stuff inside the network to, yes, to once, trap all that uh, one, stuff. Once you're inside, you can de do really nasty stuff. Um, and they never got caught until much, much later. Um, so it's even hard to detect some of the certain types of invasions. It's, um, yes, if something happens, it's, it's, very, it's, it's really difficult to trace down what happened. And even if you do, it's, uh, and especially in the cases, in this example with Gemalto, the, the, the attribution is really hard. Yeah. If yeah. you um, have some, well, um, uh, think of some con conventional attacks, some brute force on the street, something like that. If you uh, catch those guys who did it, you have a, you soon have a pretty good idea who's behind them, if they were doing it on their own or if there's some organization who inspired or hired them to, to mm. do something. Um, if, your, if your computer or your, your, your company system is compromised, um, the, best you can, the best you can get is some, some, some source IP and with, with a bit of bad luck, they end, end up on your computer and uh, ask, uh, the law enforcement will uh, knock at your door and ask you, um, well, what are you doing? And you can say, yeah, uh, I yeah. didn't do anything. But, and I mean, the attributions to you because they use your computing resources to launch the attacks. They launched the attack perhaps from, from your system. Yeah, exactly. So, um, but where did they... You obviously didn't it. Perhaps you... It's not too difficult to prove that, but um, where did they, where did they come from then? Mm -hmm. Who was it? So it's uh, it's it's. Um, so you recommend using tools like this to to figure out vulnerabilities in your own applications, right? Um, this, that would be the second step. I'd I'd like to encourage developers who do web applications and. No, let, let, let me put it this way. Most, most uh, web application developers um, have heard about several kinds of attacks. Everybody reads it in the press that uh, bad things can happen to web applications. Mm -hmm. So they all have heard about SQL injection, cross-site scripting, and something like that. And perhaps they heard, they already read somewhere what the problems are. What I like to encourage uh, them is to actually try it. Take an afternoon off and or a, week, or a weekend and actually try it. For example, on so, first so on use one of these compromised apps. Yes, first give that. the attacks a try. See what you can actually accomplish on the end users. Yes, and then computer. first see what see what 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 ha what can happen. So it's it can can be really nasty. And on the other hand, after that, uh, have a look at the code and. Uh, Look for, look for patterns that look uh, familiar with uh, your day-to-day -day job. Cool. Perhaps you can do at a second step, test it on your own applications. <laughs> um, well, uh, it's a side note, never do it on the production system. <laughs> uh, someone might get uh, very unhappy if you mess up the database. Perhaps. Or something perhaps, like that. <laughs> or if you get access to customer data you're not supposed to see. Yes, exactly. But the development environment is perfectly, you know, yeah. you can control it. Cool. No, that's good advice. Um, and this has been some real hacking for our, our night hacking stream. <laughs> yeah. So, thanks very much, Stefan. So, thank you for having me. Yep. And enjoy the rest of the Java Land conference. <laughs>